Well, hi everyone. I'm really excited today. I've been prepping for today's show, reading up on everything I can learn. And what's it all about? Well, here it goes. The question is whether for those of us over 50, 55, is Valentine's Day still as much about sex and intimacy and the biggest day of the year to celebrate love and lovers? <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor of Bloomer Boomer. Now, this is our Valentine's Day show and recognition of the day that most couples have something a little bit more intimate in mind than, well, let's say a box of chocolates. It's also a great time to take a deep dive into sex, into aphrodisiacs, healthy sex habits, and how to stay sexy at any age. And who better to talk to about that is Dr. Uh, Dudley Danoff. Now, he is author of The Ultimate Guide to Male Sexual Health, who has an abundance of expert tips for staying in good condition so that we can be our best in the bedroom, and urologist to many Hollywood stars. Dr. Danoff, great having you here today, and I always love talking to you about sex. <laughs> Andy, you're talking about my favorite subject. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, I think what is so great about focusing on sex, it's an opportunity for us to think about our own uh, sexual health. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, sexual health goes along with general health. I mean, to have good sex, you have to have good general health, you have to have upper body strength, lower body strength, cardiovascular fitness. I mean, it's the whole package. <laughs> I, yeah, and I don't think that we all always think of it that way, but how true it is. So maybe we should first see uh, what it takes to uh, invigorate our sex life. Let's talk. Let's talk about aphrodisiacs. The greatest aphrodisiac uh, is love, is love itself. Uh, and uh, there really isn't an aphrodisiac, not rhinoceros horn, not yohimbine, uh, not chopped up, uh, you know, gonads of some African monkey. Uh, there is no, there is no aphrodisiac. And, and what is promoted out there and sold over the internet and in the magazines is mostly a hope. It's a placebo effect. And we're going to send, you know, send you this magic black dust you know, sprinkle it on your genitalia and magically you're going to be, uh, you know, like you were when you're 20. It's, it's, it's just the placebo effect. 40% of the time, if I tell you something, the sugar pill is going to work and I tell you what it's going to do, 40% of the time, uh, people say it works. Uh, so the greatest aphrodisiac is love. Now, let's not confuse uh, the magic blue pills, the, I mean, the Cialis of the world or the Viagra of the world. Those are not aphrodisiacs. Those are, are drugs of performance. They're not drugs of desire. They actually have an active substance which dilates the blood vessels and increases blood flow. So those are performance enhancing drugs. They're not aphrodisiac. So again, Good distinction. Thing. That's a really good distinction to make. And yeah. let's just take a, a, some sobering, uh, a sobering message here that uh, and then we can get back into some more fun things. But we even hear how STDs are not just a problem of the young sexually active population. It's an issue for the older generation. I guess it's about how to stay safe in today's sexual environment, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the way you stay safe, you could be you could be 20, you could be 120. I mean, there is only one way to stay safe, and that's to have safe sex. <laughs> so uh, you must, must, must know every sexual detail about your partner. And if you're having unsafe sexual uh, practices, uh, particularly in the gay community, then you must never but ever have unprotected sex. And if you're having either unprotected sex or unsafe sex or sex with a partner that you are not wholly familiar with, you run the risk of getting one of the STDs. Uh, I mean, they're all over the place. Chlamydia, uh, gonorrhea, uh, HPV virus, uh, herpes, uh, genital herpes. So th th there's a lot of villains out there. In your view, what's the best way to have a healthy, uh, healthy Valentine's Day? Uh, is it to have sex? <laughs> Well, that's <laughs> that beats sees chocolate every time. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's the it's the it's the greatest thing to come down the pike since uh, chopped liver. I mean, 
it, it's it's good for your muscles. It's good for your cardiovascular system. Uh, it's it clears the cobwebs out of your prostate. It it clears your mind. I mean, what what better activity in the world uh, is there than than sex with a with a with a loving partner? And as long as you can keep a anger and anxiety out of the bedroom, I mean, you're uh, uh, you're hitting a a home run, a home run in the bottom of the ninth with the bases loaded. Yes, and I know that you have some advice on uh, healthy uh, sex habits for men in 2020. Well, I mean, I have to emphasize again, you know, in this in this age of promiscuity and uh, you know porn stuff uh, everywhere, I cannot tell you as a mainstream practicing urologist the importance of safe sex. I mean, I mean, it's a pretty broad statement. Uh, so safe sex means, you know, having sex with uh, with a partner whose sexual history you're 100 percent familiar with and, and having safe sexual practices. So if you're in the gay community and you're doing something that is at least potentially unsafe, you just have to have uh, use a condom. And uh, I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, using a condom is like uh, taking a shower with your socks on. But, you know. <laughs> that is the old the old proverb about that. It, yeah, but go ahead. But the downside, Andy, is 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 disastrous and and could be fatal. So true. Now I think we are learning that uh, Valentine's Day is not just for the young. Uh, what are some of the ways to stay sexy um, as we age? Well, I think the most the most important thing. I mean, this is. You know, I'm basically a surgeon, a scientist, but what I'm about to say is really very unscientific in a way. It's about attitude. Stay engaged. Have a positive attitude. Don't give up. Uh, they asked Clint Eastwood, age 88, you know, how, how are you still, how are you still a successful actor, a producer, a filmmaker? What, what, what is, and he said, you know, I don't let the old guy in. So it's about your attitude. It's about it's 99% between your ears for men and maybe one or 2% between your legs. So your attitude, the power of positive thinking is applied uh, to your genitals. It's as big as it is, it's as long as it is, as fat as it is. It's what you believe in it. You, you have self doubt, I can't perform, I'm gonna be weak. It's like a self fulfilling prophecy. I, I call it a negative feedback loop. It's like the dog chasing his tail and ever decreasing circles until he disappears up as you know what so no no negativity uh i mean the other things obvious uh, diet exercise weight uh low carbs uh, low lipids low fat uh but but attitude attitude trumps it all i think we may have touched upon this a little bit but but what should men do for their uh, sexual health in the new year well again i think attitude so let, let's start with attitude don't let any negativity you know creep into the bedroom or creep anywhere near uh, so the second thing is obviously love and respect your partner and i don't care who your partner is what age what sex uh bi uh, homosexual gay in between transition i mean i'm i'm sort of a old-time urologist and with all these different categories <laughs> I'm frankly confused, but it doesn't matter, you know, in what category yeah. your partner falls. Uh, you know, got to love that partner, respect that partner, respect their wishes, uh, communicate your feelings. I like this. I don't like this. Stay away from that. Uh, a, a diet, uh, low in fat, low in carbohydrates, high in protein, a regular exercise program, upper body strength, lower body strength, cardiovascular fitness. I mean, all of those things go hand in glove in a great uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah, and I love your book because it covers all of that and it's broken out in a, in a table of contents and a good reference. Um, yeah, and thank you, man. We want to emphasize uh, that on the uh, feminine side, we're not ignoring you, but I. Uh, but uh, uh, let me ask you this, Dr. Danoff, wouldn't you have concur that uh, uh, the guy who's doing some of the right things is going to make it a lot better for his partner, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, w one of the things there about partners, and it doesn't matter who, if your partner's of the same sex 
or a different sex or in one of the transition zones, and you've got to listen to your partner's needs. You've got to be accommodating, uh, you know, give unto others and as you would hope they would give to you. And it works. It works that way in a sexual relationship almost more than any. You know, I'll do something for you if you do something for me. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Don't be bashful about it. You know, op- open the door, open your arms, open your heart. Uh, be giving, be generous, and it will pay you back uh, multiple dividends. On this Valentine's Day that uh, we want to remind everybody of uh, and have fun and, and, uh, and, and get a box of chocolates and a little bit of loving, maybe. Well, I, yeah, I, I would say, you know, have a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's That's the greatest thing ever. And love each other. Be open. Be generous. Be kind. Uh, no, no hatred. Uh, no animosity. Uh, and I think the more open you are, and the more giving you are, the more you will get happiness in return. Beautiful, Dr. Danoff. Thank you so much. That's uh, Dr. Dudley Danoff, uh, urologist and author of the Ultimate Guide to Male Sexual Health. And you can get uh, you can get the book right here at Bloomer Boomer in our awesome things section on the uh, bloomerboomer.com website. And we uh, thank you all. And until next time, so long.